drones or un, unmanned aircraft systems, commonly referred to as UAS, has become a very common technology used in agriculture, especially here in the U.S. Just in 2019, there was a lo- there was 1.3 million registered drones in the U.S. Uh, not all that, of course, agriculture, but as we look and we and travel around to, to farms and consultants and other support in agriculture, it's very common to find drones and trucks on desks and every uh, or other places within the operation. Um, here in the U.S., uh, as we look, uh, drones have been primarily primarily used for scouting um, purposes, but today. Today, they're used to collect remote sense imagery, uh, conduct tissue sampling, conduct water sampling, uh, and even today, uh, we have spray drones that are available from several manufacturers out there. Uh, Just in Ohio alone, I know of several uh, spray drones operational and no two companies offering spray drone uh, as an option for farmers to, to use. Here in the U.S., uh, drone spraying was actually approved in 2015, but under very strict rules in the state of California. I will say that the FAA still uh, battles with what some of the rules may look like. Uh, here's an example of just drone scouting. Uh, it's common that uh, you're starting to really see consultants use drones to collect stand counts on, on in corn and soybean fields, uh, but they can even be used to identify insects, crop disease, weeds, and even nutrient deficiencies out there. Uh, globally, uh, this is just one example. Uh, John Deere is even um, showcasing uh, automation, and one of the pieces of automation in, in this industry is drones. Uh, Deere at uh, the 2019 Agritechnica uh, showcased their uh, drone solution that they had developed, a, a large capacity drone, um, I think spraying up to towards 30 feet wide, and, and it had a, a ground sprayer uh, that was a fully autonomous sprayer. But for today, uh, drone spraying, um, like I said, here in Ohio, uh, we've got a few operational, a uh, few businesses actually offering uh, to pay to come out and, and drone spray. Um, and so uh, with that, just advantages, and, and these are things that we're looking at at Ohio State and even demonstrating at the Farm Science Review is, is this concept of drone spraying. But, you know, areas where we can't gr- get ground sp- machines in. Uh, can, uh, something like this can be used uh, to cover those areas. Uh, spotter cleanup, especially in soybeans. Uh, I had examples here in 2020 where folks uh, actually were doing some cleanup on soybeans using drone spraying. Uh, small fields, again, just not econ- it's just not economical to put a ground machine or an aero application machine there. You could use a, a drone to cover a few, few acres very quickly. Uh, steep terrain or other, uh, you know, uh, areas that uh, are very hard for ground machines, if not uh, unable, unable for ground machines to operate, uh, this is where these start to make sense. And yeah, you got to get out and cover grass waterways or buffer strips. Need to spray some things. You can you can use uh, a spray drone. I think there will be many other uses, but just some of the advantages and places where they seem to fit. Just some ideas, you know, today, uh, again, a lot of development and innovation in spray drones. Uh, This is just one example, but typically what we're talking about is something that carries four to five gallons, uh, spray somewhere between 10 to 20 feet, uh, commonly 12 to 15, it seems like for most of these. Uh, From an application rate perspective, because they have limited onboard storage, you get about uh, one to two gallons per acre sprayed. Uh, I just want to note that when we think about products, and labels and and trying to stay within uh, labels. Uh, From a flight time, these things can fly anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, For most of them, you know, they're going to cover an acre in about three to four minutes on on average. So uh, just a little bit of oversight Uh, from a, you know, four to five gallon. Again, we're thinking at one GPA, uh, you know, you're going to be able to to probably be in a flight or in air maybe – uh, probably 12 minutes or less to cover cover three to four acres with something like this. Uh, you know, if you're thinking about drones and, and purchasing and, and here's some recommendations or considerations we'll throw out. First of all, uh, very new technology. Um, uh, you know, I encourage you to do your homework. 
Okay, do your homework and make sure you you understand what you're purchasing. Uh, I know cost is always a factor. Roughly speaking, most of these are going to cost somewhere between twenty five to thirty or just over thirty thousand dollars. And you get a complete kit. You get the drone. You get all the spray uh, components. To, um, you get multiple batteries so you can keep it in flight as you know almost continuously. Uh, so you typically get enough batteries. You get a recharge uh, charger for those batteries as well. Uh, some things to think about. Hey, I got this spray drone, but how are you going to service it? Uh, typically, uh, you're going to have to have uh, uh, something uh, built, a tank to do a, a, a premix to have all your product ready to go, uh, possibly even an electric or a, some kind of a pump to pump it into the drone. And then a lot of times you could use a truck, uh, but the truck and trailer to, to, to move between fields. So it's just not the drone. You got to think about how you're going to keep the keep service to it, in particular refilling. Uh, so think about what kind of tank and, and pump. Uh, just to note, a drone weighing over 55 pounds or greater on takeoff uh, must be operated under a different set of regulations and restrictions according to FAA. So just keep that in mind. As you, so these are just some aspects to, to think about. On the regulations, when we get to spray drones, uh, it's a very fluid situation. I know uh, the FAA uh, continues to, to look into how, how these will be handled, uh, but at minimum, but at minimum, if you're going to buy one and you're going to fly, uh, you're going to at least need three things. You're, you're going to have to have your private pesticide applicator license. You're going to have to, to, to take and, and pass and get the Part 107 certificate. You know, all this can be found on the FAA website. And you're also going to need a Part 137 certificate. Okay. Again, all found on the FAA website. So at minimum, you're going to have to have those three uh, license or certificates in order to fly. And don't forget that when you buy a drone, you get, you're uh, required to register that drone with the FAA.